today comes from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Lord God, we come before you today bringing praise, hallelujah, Lord God, magnifying your name, exalting your name together as one body assembled wherever we are. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us to this time. And we thank you, Lord, for providing all that we need. We thank you for being who you are and loving us with an unfailing love. And our prayer is, oh God, that you would have your way in the service today, that you, O oh God, would move from heart to heart and mind to mind, letting each one know wherever they are that you are present with them. We thank you, Lord God, because, O oh Lord, you are faithful. You have never failed us, and we desire to be your faithful people. Lord, have your way in the worship today, in us and through us. Use us to your glory. In the matchless name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord. With my hands lifted high and my mouth filled with Oh, 
because you are worshiping with the people of God in this part of the world. I only have one announcement I want to make today, and I just want to remind our saints who are local here in Halifax that we will be holding an outdoor service next Sunday, July 25th. We will meet on the grounds of Africville for an 11 a.m. service. And so I hope if you are in the area, you are able to join us. We will be uh, observing all of the p pandemic protocols, so we're asking you to make sure you're socially distant from those who are not in your household and in your bubble, and that you wear masks. We have plenty of hand sanitizer and wipes on hand for you if you need. And you might also bring a snack if you desire. Hallelujah. Just make sure you pick up your trash as we leave the grounds. But we just bless God for being able to come together um, as we enter into phase four of our reopening plan here in Nova Scotia. We want to continue to be diligent because we know the virus has variants that are coming to attack and many places are seeing large numbers of infections. We want to stay low, hallelujah. And so we just ask you to be ever so careful. 
and we cannot exceed an outdoor gathering limit uh, as prescribed by the health officer. And so we'll be mindful of that as well. We thank you for continuing to support us through this time of pandemic. And now we just ask you to bring an offering to the Lord. Give as God has blessed you, as God has prospered you to give. Give desiring to thank God for all that God has provided and to acknowledge that God is the provider of everything we need. We thank God for the opportunity to bring a gift to the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord God, now we ask you, continue, O oh God, to teach us how to give. Open up our hearts and our hands. Lord God, help us to surrender everything we have, including our purses and wallets, into your hands. We pray, Lord God, that you will bless every gift and every giver. And Lord God, that those who desire to give but for some reason do not have it, that you would bless them as well so that the next time they are able to give. We thank you for being able to receive gifts electronically for those who cannot bring gifts into the house. And so, Lord, we just ask you, oh God, to enable that to happen for many more people. And God, help us to be good stewards of the gifts given to this house so that they may be used to the building of your kingdom, to your honor and to your glory. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. You are an honorable and truthful person, dear God, and you do all things well. 
Thank you for all you give there, God. Bless and be with each and every one of us, dear God, as we continue to give praise. And we continue to give honor to you, Lord God, for you are God and God alone, most high and everlasting God, King of kings and Lord of lords, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. We give all praise, all honor to you. In Jesus' name we thank you, Lord. Amen. The scripture lesson for today comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 20 to 29. Hear the word of the Lord. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out by prayer. Sorry, I'm saying it wrong. This kind can, can come out only by prayer. As we consider this word, please meditate with me on the thought only by prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, now in this the moment of proclamation and teaching, we ask you, Lord, to be with us, to open up this word to our understanding, to help it be rooted firmly in our hearts so that it might grow and bring forth fruit. We thank you, Lord God, for caring enough to send us a word. And I pray now that I would decrease and you would increase and the word come forth as you would have it. To your glory, God, today, do a work in us. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Let's backtrack a little bit just for context. Jesus has been performing miracles and feeding multitudes. We hear about the feeding of the 4,000. We hear about the feeding of the 5,000. This is in the gospel according to Mark. Then he asked the disciples, what are people saying? What's the word on the street? Who are people saying that I am? And that's when Peter makes his declaration that Jesus is the Messiah. In Mark, Jesus follows up that conversation by telling them the things he must endure. And the same Peter who had just made that declaration about him being the Messiah protests the suffering and the death that Jesus speaks of. Peter says he will not let that happen to Jesus. Jesus then has to rebuke Peter for his narrow, temporal, earthly vision. Realize that we are in Mark, and Mark wrote to show people who Jesus is as the son of the living God. Mark begins with, the mir with miracle after miracle in the first half of the gospel so that the identity of this one performing all these miracles becomes apparent. It begins to dawn on us who are trying to see with our spiritual eye 
who this stranger is. As Mark moves beyond Peter's um, outing of Jesus's identity, Peter, James, and John witness Jesus in a state of glory on the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw Jesus with Moses and Elijah. And for any who still doubted, bam, there it is. That's who he is. After these three have witnessed the transfiguration, they rejoin the other disciples and we come to today's pericope. In this story, Jesus comes upon a boy who has been tortured by a demon for most of his life. We're not told why the demon has chosen this boy or how it happened. Jesus does not explicitly say that this is for the glory of God as he had done before in the case of the man born blind. This is an attack on one of God's people and Jesus is most likely indignant at this assault. The word often records that Jesus had compassion. That compassion was a righteous indignation at what the enemy was doing to God's people. And so I imagine in this case, Jesus was indignant. And there are a few points uh, about this encounter with this demon-possessed boy that I want you to take particular note of. The first is that when the father brought the boy to Jesus, and that's what we, we hear in the, when I first started reading, I started with the line, so they brought him. When the father um, brought the, the boy to Jesus, Jesus asked, how long has he, has he been this way? How long has he been like this? And I can imagine the father, father's internal dialogue. He didn't say this out loud, and maybe it's just me. <laughs> But I would be thinking, what difference does it make how long he's been like this? Look at him, right? I brought him to you for healing. Can you please just help him? Sometimes we go into the hospital and they want to ask us all kinds of questions. And we're like, can you just help the person who's sick, right? We can answer these questions later. He wants immediate relief for his son. And that's understandable. He didn't say those things out loud but I can imagine he thought them. He answered Jesus and he told them that the boy had been suffering since childhood. We don't know how old the boy is, we're not told. Um, so we don't know how many years that means he's been suffering. But the crowd that gathered knew, the community knew, the father knew, and Jesus knew. Making the boy's father say it out loud that it's been many years, that it's been since his childhood was more for the father than, and for the crowd than it was for Jesus. Sometimes God wants us to acknowledge our pain, recognize our predicament so that we realize how profound our deliverance is. That's why Jesus asked, how long has he been like this? This didn't just happen yesterday. If it had just happened yesterday, then, the, then it wouldn't have been so concerning, right? It wouldn't have been as great a miracle. Well, he was sick yesterday and he's well today. But this happened many years ago. The boy, it was important for the crowd to hear the testimony of how long this boy had suffered. Many years without relief, without deliverance, without help. But somehow the boy's father still hoped that the disciples could deliver him. After all this time, when there has been no relief in sight, the father held on to hope. And I want that word to resonate with you today. Don't give up with whatever you're dealing, whatever is challenging you today, do not give up. Help is on the way. Your deliverance is at hand. I know sometimes we want to throw in the towel, but God has a plan if you will just wait on him. The word says that the boy convulsed. He got thrown around violently 
even in the presence of Jesus, foaming at the mouth and such. This is the other point I want you to get. Sometimes the enemy throws everything at you at the last attempt to kill you or dash your hopes and dreams. Come on, somebody. The enemy throws everything at you in a last ditch attempt to rob you of what God has for you. It is a full out last effort to destroy because the enemy has peeped into your future and is trying to keep you from what God has in store. Somebody ought to be shouting out there. The challenges and difficulties will rise up just before your deliverance. But don't you give up today. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Satan wants you to be discouraged. The enemy wants you to throw up your hands and give up. I don't know who needs to hear this today. I don't know who besides me, because I need to hear it. But thank God that the Lord is on the scene and he will come to our rescue. We are on the verge of victory. We have to wait and we have to trust, but God is there to rescue us and to save us. The boy's father had asked the disciples and they were not able to cast out the evil spirit. The father had faith that his son would be freed by these men of faith, but the disciples failed. So the father of the boy said to Jesus, if you can, <laughs> I can imagine the Lord thinking, if I can, if I, if I can. Yes, Jesus said nothing is impossible with God. And I wonder church today, do we know that? Do we really know in our heart of hearts that nothing is impossible for God? The boy's father believed, but when he saw the disciples fail, that little tinge of doubt crept in. What I love is that Jesus understands our fears and our doubts. Jesus understands what it is to be human with all our faults and frailties. All we have to do is be authentic, be open, be truthful, be real with God. The man could have pretended to have all the faith in the world, but he didn't. He was honest and he said, yes, I believe, help my unbelief. That little part that wants to say, mm, maybe not because these disciples couldn't do it. Help that little part of me that cannot see right now because they tried and they did not succeed. Help that little part of me that hears about the miracles others have experienced and yet I do not see it in my own life. Help that part of me that reads what you can do and springs up in hope, but then is crushed again because my change has not yet come. I know I'm talking to somebody today. Help that part of me that rejoices in the progress we see as a people, but then sinks in despair at yet another shooting, another act of racial hatred, or political leaders who rather oppress than uplift. Help that part of me that knows you can do anything, but then watches as evil prospers in the world. Lord, yes, I believe. <laughs> Help my unbelief. The boy's father was honest with Jesus. He opened his heart. He did not try to hide his doubt. He asked for the Lord's compassion that manifests in this world with power. Power to defeat the enemy, power to overcome evil, power to ignite the hearts of believers, power to pull back the veil and open access 
to the kingdom, power to meet challenges head on without fear, power to have the life God has planned for us and know that in ups and downs, God is there. Power to see beyond the temporal into the spiritual, into what God has ordained and what God has allowed. Power to believe what our natural senses tell us and to understand that despite that, God has a plan for us. When we trust the Lord, he shows us his power. I want you to pause for a minute and not pause your video, pause and think in your mind. Just take this scene in. Jesus has performed this spectacular miracle in front of a crowd. This boy was brought to him. The demon had the boy all over the ground, convulsing, foaming at the mouth, throwing him about, thrashing him about. And Jesus delivers this boy. He performs this spectacular miracle in front of a crowd, delivering a boy. <laughs> Get this now but also delivering his family. Don't miss that. The boy did not suffer in a vacuum. The boy did not suffer in a silo apart from everyone else. His possession, his incapacitation, his bondage to the evil spirit, his suffering and pain affected his family and community. The father said, Please deliver him. Have pity on him and on us. They have all had to deal with this infirmity. Sometimes what you're dealing with is the result of someone else's condition. Come on, somebody. When our children are locked up, so are their families, unless they turn their backs on them. Family travels back and forth visiting their imprisoned loved ones that might result in financial stress and strain. Or you might get financial stress from a medical condition, from a disease that requires expensive medicines not covered by insurances. The care that is needed for someone who is sick or aging, some of our sick and aging relatives can often wear down the one who assumes the responsibility for that care. People who have unresolved issues in their family or their household bring those same unresolved issues, those negative attitudes into the community and into the church. People do not suffer in a vacuum those around them suffer as well. The man said, we have had to save him from fire or from drowning. Take pity on us. The father was asking for relief for his son. He was asking for his son to be healed and delivered, but he was also asking for relief for himself and for his family, and for his community. The last point I want you to take home today. The disciples could not deliver the boy from the evil spirit. Later on, in their private time with Jesus, they asked the Lord, why? And Jesus said, it takes prayer. He told them this in their private time together. If you want to know what is going on in your life, in your heart, in your thoughts, with your behavior, with your attitudes, with your faith, if you really want to know, you need to carve out private time with the Lord. Jesus will share with you when you ask him. He may not tell you everything, but by his spirit, Jesus will tell you what you need to know to move forward. He will tell you enough. Nothing, nothing can beat private time 
listening to what the Lord has to say about what is happening in your life. It is your devoted time given with a devoted heart. It is your desire to hear from the Lord that opens up your spirit ear. It is your desire to see what God is doing that opens up your spirit eye. It is your desire to know uh, that opens up the word of revelation to you. It is your desire to draw near that brings you into the very presence of God. Jeremiah 29, 11 is often quoted. I like quoting it, you know, declaring that God has plans for our lives, plans to prosper us and not harm us, to give us hope and a future. I love to quote that. But let's not leave out verses 12 and 13 immediately following that say, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me <laughs> with all your heart. Come on, church. When you seek him with all your heart, he will be found. Now, of course, these declarations are given to Israel during the time of exile. God is encouraging them in their time of being displaced from their homeland. But we can appropriate these words today as many of us are in spiritual exile, forgetting the promises of God and doing life apart from God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And if you seek him with your whole heart, you will find him. Your starting point is prayer. In their private time, Jesus tells the disciples that they could not deliver the boy because they had not stopped to pray first. They had not girded themselves in prayer before facing off with a demon. They had not strengthened their inner selves with the power that comes through prayer. Prayer may seem like an obvious thing to do, but how many of us move without prayer? Because we're doing something good, because we're trying to help somebody. We might even be serving the Lord in some way. We do not pause to communicate with the Lord first. And very often our efforts are thwarted. Seemed like a good thing to do, but it looks like God did not bless it. Believers who lay hands in situations had better be prayed up first. And I'll say that again, do not lay hands in any situation without the Spirit of God directing you. Believers had better be prayed up. We pray without ceasing, yes, but in a given moment of facing off with an attack of the enemy, gird yourself up in prayer for that specific circumstance, listening for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Prayer prepares us to perform. Only by prayer, church, can we tap into the source of our life and strength. Only by prayer can we overcome the tests and trials of this life. Only by prayer can we see the one who can rescue us and save us. Only by prayer can little tinges of doubt be wiped out. Only by prayer are we empowered to do what God has called us to do. Only by prayer can we be strengthened in our inner selves to be who God has called us to be. Only by prayer can we be real and authentic before God, opening up our whole hearts and our minds. Only by prayer can we know how high and how deep and how long and how wide is the love of God for each of us. Only by prayer can we keep the relationship with our Savior tight and right. Only by prayer can we hope to know the Lord's salvation and suffering for our sin? Only by prayer can we see a new dawn after our darkest night. 
Only by prayer can we speak things that are not as though they were. Only by prayer can our spirit eyes have 2020 vision so that we may see as God sees, love as God loves, have compassion as God has compassion. Only by prayer can we seize hold of the kingdom and the vision that God has for our future. God has great plans for us. God is bringing us through this building project at New Horizons. But hear me today, what God is doing is about so much more than a physical building. Look and see with your spirit eye what's going on with New Horizons Baptist Church and the church all over the world. We have had some delays and some disappointments, but it is all working for our good because it's not just about a building, it's about us. God is working to transform us so that we can occupy the new building. He's making us fit to go into that new space. We cannot go into the new church house until our spiritual church houses are new. We are on the verge of victory if we would be attentive to the spirit in prayer. Only by prayer church can we be the church on earth, loving and serving as Jesus taught. Only by prayer can we have the overcoming power for this life to be able to declare we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. The enemy of our souls is defeated. Satan is under our feet. Sin has no power over us. We are free in Christ Jesus and who the Son sets free is free indeed. This truth, this declaration, this reality can be made manifest in our lives today only by prayer. Amen. spoken to your heart. If you feel the spirit of God knocking on your heart, this is your time. Today is your day of deliverance. Today is the day that God wants to welcome you into the kingdom. The spirit of God is speaking to you saying, come be a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. Jesus, came, Jesus Christ came and he died for our sin. He took on the sin of all of the world for generations past, present, and future. He was the atoning sacrifice so that we would not have to pay the price because the word of God says, hallelujah, that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But you have to avail yourself of the gift. You have to accept the salvation that Jesus offers you. Jesus rose on the third day to assure us that we too will rise. We will die from this earth, but when we die from this earth, we go from life to life. We have abundant life here with all of the gifts that God gives to us. The joy and the peace of knowing that God is with us no matter what. 
And then when we leave this life, we go to live in eternity in glory with the Lord. Hallelujah. If you want that promise today for yourself, please contact me or a local pastor in your area and say, you know what? I'm giving my life to Jesus. I want to be in the family of God. I surrender my heart. I want him as my savior and my Lord. I acknowledge that I need him, that I am a sinner in need of a savior. When you do that, God comes in, takes up a, a residence in your heart to let you know you're never alone. There's nothing in this life that you have to face by yourself. So why don't you come to the Lord today? Hallelujah. Start with prayer because everything we have in our relationship with God happens only by prayer. Amen. God bless you today. Please receive the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence in glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen.